In 250 cases in the United States where convicted prisoners have been exonerated on the basis of DNA testing, faulty eyewitness evidence played a major part in 75%. Our understanding of why eyewitness evidence can be so unreliable owes most to Elizabeth Loftus. In a series of groundbreaking experiments, she not only changed our understanding of eyewitness evidence, but of memory generally and she was recently ranked as the most influential woman psychologist of the 20th century. So how did it all begin? I thought I really would like to do some work that has more obvious social relevance, more obvious a uh, practical application. And a, a perfect intersection for somebody who had a background in memory uh, but an interest in legal issues and crimes and accidents and other kinds of legal problems that people have, uh, a perfect intersection there was to look at the memory of witnesses. And that's what I set out to do. At this time, the 1970s, the Department of Transport was offering money to study car accidents. So Loftus started there. How good were people at remembering the details of traffic accidents? In a series of groundbreaking laboratory experiments with student participants, she showed that our memory for events was more malleable than people had realised, and in the process, changed our understanding of memory forever. One of the most important of these studies was done with John Palmer in 1974. The study that I did uh, with John Palmer, who was at the time an undergraduate at the university where I was teaching, uh, and he was working in my laboratory, and w at first we were interested in how a question, the way you word a question, could affect the answer that somebody gave you. The Loftus and Palmer study consisted of two experiments. In the first experiment, 45 participants were shown seven clips of traffic accidents. They were then divided into five groups of nine and asked a series of specific questions. But the critical one was about the speed of the vehicles. So some witnesses might be asked how fast were the cars going when they hit each other. Uh, others might be asked how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other. And different verbs of contact were used. Participants in the first group were asked to estimate how fast the cars were going when they smashed into one another. The second group was asked how fast they were going when they collided with each other. For the third group, the verb was bumped. For the fourth, it was hit. And for the fifth group, it was contacted. So this is an independent measures experiment. The independent variable was the verb of contact and the dependent variable, the participant's estimation of the speed. <laughs> 